Hello Rewaldendo, this is Ali Nase, and today I have the pleasure of being with Dr. Mario Abdenur, one of our Rewaldendo faculty who also practices at the Rewaldendo Clinical Headquarters in Boston. And Mario has a clinical case that he's going to review with us. Mario, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Ali. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. Great to have you here. And uh, Mario, it seems like what the case that you have for us today is basically uh, teeth number eight and nine, and it's basically this tooth here. Uh, two teeth. Can you tell us a little bit of background about this patient? Well, it's an eight-year-old patient that suffered trauma, and uh, when he came to the office, he had uh, uh, swelling and a little bit of symptoms as well, palpation sensation, and we determined that the uh, diagnosis was necrosis. So, due to trauma, both of these teeth were necrotic. It clearly shows that you have uh, young, uh, underdeveloped roots and uh, seems to have open apices, two fairly large peripheral radiolucencies, and apparently clinical swelling, right? Clinical swelling as well, yes. So, your pulpal diagnosis was necrotic and your peripheral diagnosis was symptomatic apical periodontitis. Correct. So what was some of the decision making that you had to make in terms of how to treat this tooth and what were the challenges? Well, the challenges that we had was uh, basically trying to take care of the symptoms immediately and uh, also we wanted to close the uh, APCs uh, as soon as possible and we decided to uh, do basically um, apexification treatment, uh, one appointment, apexification treatment and we used the bioceramic uh, sealer uh, to uh, perform this procedure. So traditionally, apexification involved placement of calcium hydroxide Correct. over a year time and then waiting until you uh, develop an osteoid le a level at the open apex, uh, apex part. So you basically close the apex and then you uh, are then filling it re using regular condensation techniques. But this one step apexification, also called the apical barrier technique, correct? Apical barrier technique, and as we know, it could be used, uh, we can use different materials, but the yeah. bioceramic uh, uh, has, uh, uh, to me, it's a very easy material to use where we eliminate mixing and uh, having to deal with, uh, uh, having to re-wet the material again. So we use this particular material. Yeah, I think originally the technique was described several years ago using MTA. Correct. And MTA is, a, I mean, MTA is also a form of bioceramic. Unfortunately, uh, the MTA's clinical handling is, is a little bit of a difficult situation in these particular cases. And that's where the bioceramic cement comes handy because especially now with the release of the facet putty, right, you basically can roll, take a uni dose, a sani dose of the stuff and roll it and place it in, into place and it sits in 20 minutes so it's actually fairly quick and it exactly allows you to right. do things. So what did you do? How did you go about doing the apical barrier here? So I can see uh, on this uh, next slide that what you have done is you've placed these plugs. Can you just go ahead and explain what you did here? Well basically what we did, we did instrumental length uh, and I believe uh, we reached uh, 90 uh, diameter uh, you know on the uh, 04 uh, files and uh, after that was completely sterilized and, you know, we followed the irrigation procedures uh, and, and what have you, uh, we decided to place the apical barrier. And uh, regarding technique, uh, what we did after we had a cone shot and we could confirm our apical length, then we proceeded to cut uh, the gutta percha, the master cone, about 3.5 to 4 millimeters. And then the bioceramic material was gently condensed to the previous reference that we had before. Mm. So basically you fit the cone, you make a custom fitted gutta percha cone or in the case of the endo sequence because if you get to a size 8004 um, file then you have an 8004 gutta percha cone that fits it. What I sometimes do also you can chloroform dip the tip so you can cut it from the tip until you have a very close adaptation. And then so what you're saying is once you had the adapted, adapted uh, master file, master cone, gutta percha Correct. cone, then you cut off using a blade probably, a 15 exactly. blade, exactly about right. 4 millimeters from the apex and fitted that cone. What was the reason for doing that? Well, we wanted uh, a good biological, uh, you know, basically adaptation of the material to the apex and that can uh, more accurately be done with a bioceramic type of, uh, of material. And the reason for that, uh, you know, we want to minimize the possibilities of retreatment. We know that the material has a little bit of an expansion, that's exactly what we want. And no gutta percha will give you the fit that uh, bioceramic uh, 
gives you basically. Yeah, obviously you get the chemical bonding to the canal walls. You have at the exactly apex right. in this situation, yep. you have literally a monoblock, right, of the material, which is hydrophilic. It helps also because um, any of the other sealers would be hydrophobic uh, and would be a difficult situation having an open apex. But having this plug basically is the same as doing a retrofilling mm -hmm. you would do surgically Correct. internally as opposed to externally. It's the same kind exactly. of Exactly. That was uh, some sort of... Uh, uh, non-surgical, uh, basically surgical root canal, mm -hmm. except that we did not uh, raise a flap. And the good thing about this material, a little bit of excess, uh, actually it's extremely biocompatible, and I'd rather have a bit of excess of the uh, bioceramic than if it's a sealer, basically, any type of sealer. And, and it seems like by cutting off four millimeter from the, uh, gutta, the fitted gutta percha, then that gutta percha itself becomes your condenser. Exactly right. Right. And uh, that will be shown as well in the technique, yes. You know, got a perch acts as a condenser too. So is the art of it, Mario, really kind of figuring out how much of the putty material you need in order to fit in that amount of space that you have so that you don't put too much or too little? so that you actually get con condensation. Did you do that all in one fitting or did you do several different uh, little plugs of uh, putty that you then condensed no, that? That's a great question. There were several little plugs of bioceramic that mm -hmm. were gently condensed. And there's not exact secret of how much material you will need, but once you have such a large canal and you do cut four uh, millimeters, 4.5 uh, millimeters of gutta percha, you know very well that once you start applying it and hammering it very gently, once you find a little bit of resistance, that's the time to stop and take an x-ray. Most of the times that's more than enough. So you did a great job here taking the x-ray to confirm if you've put enough Correct. Uh, Correct. putty in there or not. Correct. Um, one of the tricks that I have found to be helpful in this situation is after you've custom fitted your cone and then you cut off four millimeters, the amount of putty that you need is just a tiny bit more than the, the, that four millimeter gutta percha segment that you've cut off, right? Because that four millimeter gutta percha uh, segment that you fitted is basically a replica of the volume of the apex in that last four millimeters. That's exactly right. And what you can do is the piece that you cut off, you can uh, set it aside with the bioceramic material and kind of try to gauge and maybe use, like uh, Ali said, Visually just a bit see. more exactly yeah. right. And then you put it in the canal and then you uh, condense it down with the putty and this is basically the x-ray that you're showing here Correct is what you end up with it's beautiful almost like a retrofill three millimeter retrofill or four millimeter retrofill that you've placed in And now the question is filling the rest of the canal exactly so right. what here shows the next uh, slide here shows that you've already backfilled uh, and filled the um, the uh, the rest of the canal. What did you what did you use? Did you just use the same uh, plugger, got a pressure plug that was left over, and then uh, cemented it with the sealer? That's exactly right. And it has a very tight, uh, good tight fit because you know the files that we it's use fitted. basically replicate the. Uh, uh, the gutta percha, and mm -hmm. you know, you can use as a clinician any sealer of choice. We do recommend the bioceramic as well, so you can create the monoblock mm -hmm. and then all the other properties as expansion and, and, and uh, uh, bacteriostatic properties are, are, are already are known. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, one of the things that I do here, you use the gutta percha in the middle of the cone as your uh, condenser and then place the, the sealer and condenser down. Um, one of the, I mean, first of all, I would recommend that people always use the bioceramic sealer in this situation because, I mean, you already have a bioceramic plug. Correct. And if you use it something else, then you won't get a bond between that sealer and the plug that you have. Correct. So the beauty of the thing is that you your putty will then seal to the sealer that you have if it's a bioceramic sealer. So it becomes more of a... Uh, um, uh, of a bond with the sealer and the putty. But beyond that, one of the things that I have found in straighter canals like this, when you can, uh, it would be easy to retreat, I oftentimes just backfill the entire space with the uh, sealer or the RRM syringable <clears throat> material because at that point, we know that the straight portion of the canal is easily retreatable with ultrasonics because the ultrasonic can go right through it. And I just find that it would be the more of a monoblock in that case. And also for you and I do in these cases, um, you know, if this case has any issues, we probably wouldn't go back and retreat at that point. We'd be doing an apico anyway, right? That's exactly right. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, but filling it with bioceramic is an excellent choice. And one of the reasons to leave a gutta percha core in there is in the future, the patient is an eight-year-old patient. If in uh, probably 10, 15 years he suffers a second trauma and there is fracture, uh, a post space can be placed by removing some of the gutta percha. That's a great point. That's a great point. 
Um, so here it's a beautiful post-op that you've already done. Seems like you put your uh, cotton and cavity in there as well. And now this is the immediate post-op and now this x-ray shows a 10-month follow-up and it appears that in the 10 months there's a tremendous amount of healing and it looks like the patient's restorative dentist has already filled the access. Yeah, the access has been filled and uh, upon uh, clinical examination there was no palpation or mobility or any uh, symptoms. So we will again recall the patient in four months just to follow up. To do a few uh, more months, but in 10 months it seems like you have tremendous Correct. amount of healing there Correct. already. Uh, you know, a couple of voids in the axis filled by the patient's yep. restorative dentist, but unfortunately sure. you don't have control of everything, right? That's part That's of the problem. That's exactly right. See, as endodontist, you only, have control. <laughs> <laughs> you only have control over half the work, the other half on which your um, success depends is kind of out of your hand. That's, That's kind of frustrating. But it is what it is. Well, this is a beautiful case, Mario. Thank you for sharing it. It basically demonstrates the use of a one-step epixification using the putty. And now with the fast set putty, you can actually achieve the results with faster sets. So you can backfill a little bit quicker uh, and have the sani dose through the uh, syringable material. One time. Yep. And, um, you know, it's an effective and efficient way of obturating, getting great results. And it looks like you uh, did a wonderful job here. Well, thank uh, you very thank much. Thank you so much for sharing with our viewers. For Rebo Dendo, I'm Ali It's a pleasure. Mario Abdenor. Mario Abdenor. And uh, we hope you found this little tutorial helpful. Thank you.